Well, in my opening statement, should we reboot abroad? When President Gotabe Rajapaksa came into power, his election manifesto was clear. His government will opt for a non-aligned policy in international relations. This means Sri Lanka is everyone's friend and everyone can be Sri Lanka's friend too. Now, the first few months of this was relatively easy to tackle as President Gotabe Rajapaksa's action proved that the country would keep to its promise of non-aligned policy. Moreover, initial contacts uh, with, uh, and relations with India and the US showed that his administration was breaking away from his brother's administration of allegiance to China. However, recent incidents have become a challenge for this fact. While consequent events have proven that uh, China is a real friend, the Gotabe Rajapaksa government continues to uh, walk on a fine line regarding relations with our neighbors while wending off unwarranted relations. The issue and uh, cancellation of contracts pertaining to the East Terminal at the Colombo Port City with India to rejection of the MCC grant, mind you, uh, that is a good thing. And now the controversy surrounding the Yugadanavi power plant agreement with uh, the US company has dented the government's plan in maintaining that non-aligned policy and pushed Sri Lanka to embrace China, who continues to stand by economically and politically at these challenging times. However, in my opinion, while the opposition of this government continues to push the notion that Sri Lanka is going to be a Chinese colony, Sri Lanka needs to reboot its foreign policy, at least in 2022, based on a more offensive approach than to a defensive and obedient one. Most of the time, Sri Lanka has operated and consecutive governments have acted from that point that Sri Lanka is not commanding to dictate how the relationship will fend off. We've been in such a beggar's mentality for decades and decades that we've forgotten that we have the power to tell these interested parties. Sri Lanka isn't someone's hussy, but more or less the pretty girl that everyone wants. So how do we do that? Again, I think it comes back to that mentality change we've been talking about for quite some time. As long as the people of this country continues to believe in the same beggar's mentality embedded into our thinking, our education and way of life, we will not even command our own tale. Sri Lanka now stands a lot to win. And mind you, when you stand at the precipice of such capacity and achievements, even the friends who look like friends for quite some time is going to look at us differently. This is where we must continue to harness relations with people who are genuinely there for us in thick and thin. First and foremost, we need to get this mentality that each country approaching us in doing uh, a business with us is not doing it for our interest alone. No, no, they don't. As Sri Lankan leaders are requested to take care of Sri Lankans, other nation leaders are doing the same thing. So everyone is approaching looking after their interests, be it China, Japan, India, the United States, or even Timbuktu. No, no, Timbuktu is not a country. It's a city in the African nation of Mali. They will fight for the best deal for their people. So Sri Lanka too needs to do just that. In the instance of the East Terminal Project, the Port City Project, the West Terminal Project, the Yugodhanavi Power Project, in all these instances, Sri Lanka needs to look after Sri Lanka. And our leaders need to put our interests first before becoming too polite and hiding behind the term Sri Lankan hospitality. This government has taken such strong measures, unlike the past UNP governments, who at every instance was ready with their butt up to receive the phallus. This government should and must continue to fight for Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka alone. 
All right, I got more questions about how 2022 will be formed in uh, terms of Sri Lanka's progress on the world stage, especially in uh, instances like the UNHRC matter, India, China, Pakistan, all that. Foreign Secretary uh, Admiral Professor Janath Kolumbi will be here shortly, but before that, as always, Zani Dwitana Masam joins me right here in the studio uh, with a look at tonight's real story. Uh, good evening, Zani Good to see you once again. Um, foreign relations, which is going to be very crucial for Sri Lanka as the development uh, stage starts rolling in. Uh, what exactly are you focusing tonight? Um, good evening, Mahesh. Uh, so given that foreign relations is quite a, quite a drastically large topic and it affects almost all facets of a country, uh, what we in this country, the complaints and what is being discussed right now is investment and like bringing in, because we have a certain developmental agenda and how does foreign relations complement that developmental agenda and that is something that we'll be exploring in the real story today. So Sri Lanka's development agenda goes hand in hand with its core foreign policy objectives. It's pivotal that our dignitaries understand this role. We're looking at the long-term growth of the country. The focal point of growth for the next few decades is to be centred around frontier markets, especially in the Asian region. This provides the underlying reason as to why Sri Lanka should pursue an active diplomatic agenda in order to build its multilateral developmental interests. The beginning of 2021 saw much speculation about Sri Lanka defaulting on its foreign debt servicing commitments. These speculations were misguided and eventually proven wrong when the country paid back four billion US dollars in the past year despite the tremendous strain on the economy due to the pandemic. It is in the midst of these developments that the Sri Lankan government had made efforts to temporarily close three of its overseas missions, i.e. the Sri Lankan High Commission in Nigeria, the Consulate General of Sri Lanka in Frankfurt, Germany, and the Consulate General of Sri Lanka in Cyprus. This was targeted towards saving foreign currency within the country. Our country's regional foreign relations are not limited to Asia. This is extended to Europe, where amongst defeats, Sri Lanka has also made many diplomatic victories. One key concern for the country has been the existence of the LTTE terror group's diaspora. European courts alongside the United Kingdom have still banned the group, and this was upheld in 2021 as well. Apart from India and China, all major importers of Sri Lankan goods are from the West. This has been facilitated by the GSP Plus status that has been awarded to Sri Lanka. However, the use of concessions such as the GSP Plus for diplomatic strong arming is something Sri Lanka had to face over time. New year brings us the need and an absolute one in that, to think in terms of meeting the challenges, equal the needs and the cooperation from the international community towards addressing the local issues that is now affecting the people of Sri Lanka. In that foremost, economic interest, investment needs, trade and commerce replaces our hitherto issues like that of security and terrorism that we once counted. So I take it 2022 lies as a new forward march that we have to launch, a new approach that we have to cater to and also adopt a strategic policy in terms of picking on countries with whom we can develop a closer and stronger relationships in terms of reciprocity for our trade, commerce and investments. In this backdrop, the current government has established strong ties with China in supporting our developmental agenda. In December 2021, a currency swap was arranged with the People's Bank of China to the tune of 3.1 billion US dollars. Sri Lanka was capable of procuring the required vaccinations for its population as well, given the strong foreign relations established between the two nations. China has lent over 5 billion US dollars for the development of various infrastructure projects, including ports, highways, and a coal power plant over the past decade. The Chinese Foreign Minister visited Sri Lanka yesterday as well. The visit of the Foreign Minister of China to Sri Lanka is particularly significant because this is the first visit he's undertaking for 2022. He'll visit a number of African countries, then uh, arrive in Sri Lanka and return home from here. Uh, that itself is a demonstration of the closeness of the relationship and the importance that China attaches to Sri Lanka. You should remember that China is the second biggest economy in the world and according to the World Bank, it is likely to become the first surpassing the United States between 2028 and 2030. The way China has uh, confronted the COVID pandemic and appears to have overcome the threat suggests that it is quite capable of achieving that goal 
sooner than later maybe it may even surpass that goal the strong relationship has come under wide amount of critic from certain domestic political parties such as the sjb which has damaged the country's economic prospects one key critic being the apparent debt trap that sri lanka is under with china while an increase in borrowings from china may be observed in the post war period the current debt situation directly stems from the country's graduation to a middle income country limiting access to concessionary loans provided by multilateral agencies and bilateral donors in terms of sri lanka's foreign relations with india the most recent development has been the joint venture at the trincomalee oil tank farm which was negotiated in completely unreasonable terms with india by the former government of sri lanka in refreshing your memory in 2017 an agreement was reached with india to lease 99 tanks to india for 99 years currently sri lanka is getting these tanks back to the government and through lease agreements 24 tanks will be given to the ceylon petroleum corporation 14 tanks will be given to the lanka indian oil corporation and 61 tanks will be given to a mutual interest between cpc and lioc for 50 years the west container terminal of the colombo port is to be developed in partnership with the adani group in india in early december last year finance minister basil rajapaksha had visited india as well sri lankan high commissioner to india milind morogodo had stated that india's itc hotels is investing up to 400 million us dollars in sri lanka it is clear that sri lanka's approach is to work hand in hand with improving economic diplomacy in this background after 23 months the country has broken from the 80000 monthly tourist arrivals rate with 2021 bringing in close to 200,000 tourists from a variety of nations this was further facilitated by the multilateral efforts taken by the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority which has fostered a key marketing campaign in Ukraine and Russia targeting a majority of the winter travelers for december alone these two nations have been top performers now we operate uh, from uh, russia moscow uh, four direct flights two sri lankans and two aeroflot uh, all flights are full these days to sri lanka because it is heavy winter here in russia i'm really happy that we managed to send this type this amount of uh, tourists from these countries in terms of merchandise exports sri lanka is on its way to surpassing its highest revenue ever by closing in on 12 billion us dollars a testamentary factor to how well the country is working with peer nations in terms of trade relationships When President Gotabaya Rajapaksha came to office the government undertook a policy that said India first which bore its merits especially considering the vaccination efforts in the initial response to the pandemic this reflects the country's commitment to establishing solid regional ties when moving forward a point significant when considering creating a foreign policy that has longevity which i believe the establishment of this foreign policy and taking this foreign policy forward something that we haven't been able to do over successive governments is something that would be quite an interesting subject to touch on today's discussion uh indeed uh, and also um the approach what, what what i just spoke about in terms of making sure that uh, we take care of ourselves and not not just be this this nice little person who everybody actually like you that you should <laughs> be like you uh um try to you know make sure that everybody is happy but then we we are unhappy at the end um thank you very much uh, danidu tarvasam the very nice very kind very good danidu tarvasam with a look at the real story there we will take a short commercial break on the other side for your secretary admiral professor janath kolumbagi will join me this is get real back in a moment